What's up, brothers and sisters and all God's children? Welcome back to another beautiful, sun-filled day that the Lord God has provided for us. I'd like to thank everybody for spending a little time out of your day to hang out with Bible Time with the J Squad. I'm Dad, as y'all know, and I'm here to spread the Word of God. I am reading the Holy Bible, New King James Version of the Old Testament, and we are in Genesis, verse 33. Um... I'd like to thank everybody who likes and subscribes and shares these videos. Um, you know, share them with your family and, and, and your friends. We're not doing this for any kind of attention or fortune or fame. <laughs> um, I'm just doing what I believe that the Lord God had asked me to do. Um, recently, I've shared a couple videos. One of us praying for our friend whose father ended up in a motorcycle accident and was in the ICU. And I also spread a, shared another video of of me talking about my mental health issues and mental health is no joke y'all um, I've been in the same position with a company uh, I recently left my job and I'm, I'm very scared right now with uh, finances but I recently left my job I was in a, a sales position for a little over five years and then I went to a claims position uh, claims adjuster position and during that transfer or that you know, time that I changed from one position to another, some evil got a hold of me and my spirit and my mind, and it sent me to a really, really dark place. Um, you know, due to the lack of training that I had and and the claims in general, one of my first claims was a suicide claim, and from that point, I don't know what happened to me, but I fell into a dark place, man. I. I had very bad feelings and, and thoughts of suicide myself and and I was scared you know as a man it's kind of embarrassing to admit that you need help and that you're scared but what happened you know me and my wife we took our family to Island Park uh, for a vacation and all I could do was think about this dang job and think about my dang claims and I felt worthless and in inadequate and helpless and lost. And I thought, you know, one morning I woke up and I, my first thought was to take my nine and go find a place to lay myself down. And I talked to my wife and she listened to me. I told her, you know, my first thought of the day and I started crying and she, and she helped me get help. Um, you know, I visited the doctor, and and they helped me a little bit with some, some prescriptions to help ease my mind. And I'm not one to take prescriptions. I don't even believe in Tylenol. I hate the pharmaceutical companies. But I remember, you know, we've always wanted to go to church. We, we used to go to church all the time, and then we had kids, and, and we kind of just went our own way. And our youngest, or excuse me, my oldest boy, our firstborn, he always begged us to go to church. And I don't know if y'all watch the channel or not or watch the videos, but it's a cool story. Um, my pastor, he sold uh, his motorcycle that he did not want to sell to my brother-in-law. And before we ever went to church, PCOC, we love you guys. Um, before we ever went to church, my brother-in-law called and asked us if we would go to church with him so we can get the title signed over to him. And so we did because our, our kids have always begged us to go and, and life's busy, you know, but nothing's too important for God. Nothing is. Um, I forgot that for a while. Um, so we went to church and we fell in love with the place and, and, and it's been a very, very great place to go. And during my times of struggle, you know, I've been going to church for a while now, but during my times of struggle with my mental health issues, um, I remember going into church. Uh, after we got back from vacation, I was just sitting in the in the chair and I just bawled. I sobbed. It was, you know, kind of embarrassing as a man to cry in public, but we have feelings too, you know, we're all human. Um, I asked the pastor to pray with me and and he did and he prayed for me and my family to to help with my, my mental issues, I guess you'd say. Um, and I came home and I remember hearing that voice in my head and it, and it told me to pick up the Bible and 
me, you know, I don't like to read at all. Um, I can read, I just don't like to. But I, I kind of just ignored that voice, pick up the Bible, pick up your Bible. Um, and days went by and I kept hearing, pick up your Bible, son, pick up your Bible. Um, so that's why we're here today, you know, God, God told me, you know, to pick up my Bible. And, and he told me to share the love with everybody who chooses to listen. Um, so if you're here and you're listening, God bless you. Thank God for getting me through my mental health struggles. And I just pray that if you or anybody you know is suffering from any kind of mental health issues, share the videos, share the Bible with them, share the Word of God, you know. Ask, ask God for help. Pray. And God will see you through. We're not worthless in God's eyes. We're not inadequate. We all have a purpose, and there's a reason why we're here. And I forgot that for a minute. And those dark thoughts and those evil spirits surrounded me. And even when I was going to church, they were surround. They were scary. They were very scary. Um, but now I've got the fire of Jesus in me, man. Um, I, I've. I've come to a whole new light. My eyes are open. I've been reading the, the Word of God and, and sharing it with everybody and anybody who listens is fun for me. So I just want to say thank you and God bless you to everybody who listens to these videos. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray real quick and then I'll read some verses. Um, so, dear Lord, dear God, our Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for all the provisions that you give to us and, and to our family and to even people we don't know. And I'd like to ask for your blessings upon our nation and our country and our world as a whole as we are in some dark times right now, Lord God. And we could all use you. We all, we all need you. And I'd like you to lift your, help lift the, the blindness from the people's eyes so that they can see you and seek you. And, and get into the fellowship of, of God and prosper immensely from it because right now our world is a scary place, Lord God. Um, thank you for putting the sun in the sky to warm our skin, Lord God, and thank you for the fruit and the meat that you've provided for us, Lord Jesus, and the vegetables as well. And I'd like to also say a prayer and ask you, Jesus, to help, help heal you know, people that are in the ICU. We have friends that are, their families in the ICU, and we have people we don't know that are in the ICU. And I know that they need your help, Lord God, so please just help heal, heal our friends, parents, and our friends, families, and even the people we don't know. Please touch them with your hand, God, and heal them, as, as we all know that you can do, Lord Jesus. Thank you very much for the blessings you've poured upon us. Thank you for bringing my daughter into my life after seven years of not knowing me. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord God. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share your word with whomever chooses to listen. I ask all these things in the name of Jesus, our God in heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to read some uh, verses and then I'm going to go to my daughter's birthday party. She turns eight today. Amen. Praise Jesus, guys. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> All right, y'all, so we're going to pick up off in where we left off in Genesis, verse 33. Now Jacob, now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there a Sioux was coming, and with him were four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and two maidservants. And he put the maidservants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near, his bro near to his brother. But Asu ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. And he lifted his eyes and saw the women and children and said, Who are these with you? So he said, The children of whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the maidservants came near, and their children, and bowed down. And Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. Afterward, Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed down. Then Asu said, What do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, 
These are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Asu said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, No, please, if I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand. Inasmuch as I have seen your face as though I have seen the face of God, and you were pleased with me. Please take my blessing that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. So he urged him, and he took it. And then Asu said, Let us take our journey. Let us go, and I, will be fo- and I will go before you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are weak, and the flocks and herds which are nursing are with me. And if the men should drive them hard one day, all the flock will die. Please let my Lord go on ahead before his servant. I will lead on slowly at a pace with which the livestock that go before me and the children are able to endure until I come to my Lord in Seir. Then Esau said, Now let me leave you with some of the people who are with me. But he said, What need is there? Let me find favor in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. And Jacob journeyed to Succoth, built himself a house, and made booths for his livestock. Therefore the name of the place is called Succoth. Then Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. When he came from Padan Aram, and he pitched his tent before the city, and he bought the, and he bought the parcel of land where he had pitched his tent from the children of Hamar, Sechem's father, for one hundred pieces of money. Then he erected an altar there and called it El Elo Israel. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had borne to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Sechem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay down with her and violated her. His soul was strongly attached to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So Sechem spoke to his father Hamor, saying, Give, Get me this young woman as a wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah his daughter. Now his sons were with the livestock, with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Hamor, the father of Sechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. But Hamor spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Sechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife, and make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us, and take our daughters to yourselves. So you shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it, and acquire possessions for yourself in it. Then Sechem said to her father and her brothers, Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me I will give. Ask me ever so much dowry and gift, and I will give according to what you say to me. But give me the young woman as a wife. But the sons of Jacob answered Sechem and Hamar his father, and spoke deceitfully, because he had defiled Dinah their sister. And they said to him, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. But on this condition we will consent to you, if you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised. Then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not, le- if you will not heed us and, are- and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and be gone. And their words pleased Hamor and Sechem, Hamor's son. So the young man did not delay to do the thing, because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. He was more honorable than all the household of his father. And Hamor and Sechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spoke with the men of their city, saying, These men are at peace with us, therefore let them dwell in the land and trade in it, for indeed the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us as wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men consent to dwell with us to be one people, if every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised. Will not their livestock, their property, and every animal of theirs be ours? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell with us. And all who went out of the gate of the city heeded Hamar and Sechem his son. Every male was circumcised, 
all who went out of the gate of the city. Now it came to pass on the third day that when they were in, when they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simon and Le Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and became boldly upon the city and killed all the males. And they killed Hamor and Sechem, his son, with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah from Sechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled. They took their sheep, their oxen, and their donkeys, what was in the city and what was in the field. All of their wealth, all of their little ones, and their wives they took captive, and they plundered even all that was in their houses. Then Jacob said to Simon and Levi, You have troubled me by making me obnoxious among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And since I am few in number, they will gather themselves together against me and kill me. I shall be destroyed, my household and I. But they said, Should he treat our sister like a harlot? Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make an altar there to God, whom appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau your brother. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourselves and change your garments. Then let us rise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all foreign goods which were in their all foreign gods which were in their hands, and the earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree, which was by Sechem. And they journeyed and their terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, and he and all the people who were with him. And he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel, because their God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried below Bethel under the terebinth tree. So the name of it was called Alon Beth Bacheth. 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 So the name of it was called Alon Bacheth. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply, a nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you, and to your descendants after I give this land, after you I give this land. Then God went up from him, and the place where he talked with him. So Jacob set up a pillar in the, pal in the place where he talked with him, a pillar of stone, and poured a drink offering on it and he poured oil on it. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke to him Bethel. And they journeyed from Bethel, and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, Rachel labor labored in childbirth, and she had hard labor. Now it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said to her, Do not fear, you will have this son also. And so it was, as her soul was departing, for she died that she called his name Ben-Oni, Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar on her grave, which is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. Then Israel journeyed and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Eder. And it happened when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhaz, his father and his father's concubine and Israel heard about it now the sons of Jacob were twelve the sons of Leah were Reuben Jacob's firstborn and Simon Levi Judah Issachar and Zebulun the sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin the sons of Bilah Rachel's maidservants were Dan and Naphtali Naphtali and the sons of Zilph Pa, Leah's maidservant, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. Then Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre, 
or Kirjath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had dwelt. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years, so Isaac breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Now this is the genealogy of Esau, whose son is Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughters of Elan and the Hittite, Alaban, Aholabama, the daughter of Anah, the daughter of Zibion, and the Hivite, and Basimeth, Ishmael's daughter's sister of Nebojoth. Now Ada bore Elazav. <laughs> now Ada bore Eliphaz to Esau, and Basimeth bore Reel, and Ah. Ahalabama were Jush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the sons of Asu who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Asu took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the persons of his household, his cattle, and all of his animals, and all his goods, which he had gleaned from the land of Canaan, and went to the, a country away from the presence of his brother Jacob. For their possessions were too great for them to dwell together, and the land where they, the strangers could not support them because of their livestock. So Asu dwelt in Mount Seir, Asu is Edom. And this is the genealogy of Asu, the father of the Edomites, in Mount Seir. These were the names of Asu's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Ada, the wife of Asu, and Raul, the son of Basimeth, the wife of Asu, and their sons of Elizaph, Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Now Timnah was the concubine of El Eliphaz, Esu's son, and she bore Amalek to Eliz Eliphaz. <laughs> These were the sons of Adah, Esu's wife. These were the sons of Reu, Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These were the sons of Basmoth, Esu's wife. These were the sons of Aholbam. Aholabama, Asu's wife, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion, and she bore to Asu, Josh, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chiefs of the sons of Asu. The sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Asu, were Chief Taman, Chief Omar, Chief Zepho, Chief Kenaz, Chief Korah, Chief Gatam, and Chief Amalek. These were the chiefs of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. They were the sons of Adah. These were the sons of Ruel, Esau's son, Chief Nathan, Chief Zerah, Chief Shammah, and Chief Mizah. These were the chiefs of Ruel in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Bezimeth, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Ahalabama, Esau's wife, Chief Jush, Chief Jalam, and Chief Korah. These were the chiefs who descended from Ahalabama, Esau's wife and daughter of Anah. These were the sons of Asu, who is Edom, and these were their chiefs. These were the sons of Seir the Horite, who inhabited the land Lotan, Shabal, Zibion, Ana, Dishon, Izur, and Dishan, Dishan. These were the chiefs of the Horites, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. And the sons of Latan were Hore and Haman, Latan's sister was Tima. These were the sons of Shabal, Alvin, Manada, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These were the sons of Zibion, both Aja and Ana. This was the Ana who found the water in the wilderness as he pastored the donkeys to his father Zibion. These were the children of Ana, Deshan and Alabama, the daughter of Ana. These were the sons of Deshan, Hemden, Eshben, Ithran, and Charon. These were the sons of Ezer, Bilan, Zavan, and Achan. These were the sons of Disham, Uz, and Aran. These were the chiefs of the Horites, Chief Lotan, Chief Shabal, Chief Zibion, Chief Ana, Chief Dishon, Chief Ezer, and Chief Dishan. These were the chiefs of the Horites according to their chiefs of the, in the land of Seir. Now these were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Bela the son of Beor reigned in Edom and the name of the city was Danhaba. And when Bela died, Jabab the son of Zerah and Bozrah reigned in his place. When Jabab died, Hashem of the land of the Temanites reigned in his place. 
And when Hashem died, Hadad the son of Badad, who attacked Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his place, and the name of the city was Avith. When Hadad died, Samala of Masoret resigned in his place, and when Simla, Simla died, Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his place. When Saul died, Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, reigned in his place, and when Baal and Hanan, the son of Akbor, died, Hadar reigned in his place, and the name of his city was Pau. His wife's name was Mehethabel, the daughter of Matrid, and the daughter of Mezabim, Mezahab. And these were the names of the chiefs of Asu according to their families and their places. By their names, Chief Tama, Chief Alva, and Chief Jetheth, Chief Ahalabama, Chief Allah, Chief Pinyon, Chief Kanaz, Chief Taman, Chief Mizbar, Chief Magdal, and Chief Aram. Those were the chiefs of Edom, according to their dwelling places in the land of their possession. Asso was the father of the Edomites. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us through these videos. God bless you all, and God bless this world. We love everybody. Amen. Amen.